Hello, my name is Colin Doyle and I'm Senior Systems Engineer at Juniper Networks. Today I'll be covering two topics. One, we'll deal with SSH, key generation, and how to create an RSA key that will allow you to log in to a device from a Juniper box without using a password. The reason this is important is for the second topic we'll be covering, and that is the creation of a Slack script that will allow us to automate configuration backup and copy that backup to a destination host. Junos has baked into the operating system the ability to archive configurations on a schedule. However, there's a limitation with this capability that makes doing this from a routing instance, and this can include the custom management underscore MGMT underscore Junos routing instance that out of band interface can be placed into. Not, not compatible. Basically, if you're using the MGMT underscore Junos routing instance for your EM or FXP or out-of-band port, you're not going to be able to use the Junos archival feature. Now, of course, we can still do this. We just need to do it from shell. And I'll be showing that today. So the first thing we need to do is create our SSH key pair. Uh, the screen on the left will be the virtual MX that I have running on my laptop, and the screen on the right is my local machine. And at the end of this, my intention is to be able to use a script to copy a configuration file onto the desktop of my computer from this device without actually having to put in a password, and then to do that on a schedule. So let's get started. I'm first, I'm going to log into the VMX. And I don't have a key pair on this already, so I have to use my password. Now it drops me into the root. I have logged in as root. You don't have to log in as root, but I would recommend you know, identifying a service account because when you generate your key, it will be placed, at least the private key and the public key will be generated and placed into the home directory of whatever user you're logged into. It, this is just for accounting's sake. So it doesn't have to be root, but it can be handy. And of course, since I've logged in as root, it has placed me directly into the shell, not the CLI. If you're using a non-root account, you'll have to do the start shell command here. So from here, Let's do dot ssh and we'll do an ls and we'll see that I have a known host file and that's it. Now on my machine, I'm already in my home directory, so cd dot ssh and we'll see that I have uh, my own RSA private and public key here and that's it and some custom configuration. So let's get started. We're going to first start by generating a key pair on the VMX. I want to generate an RSA key that has a bit value of 4096. I'm going to give it a custom name so that it's uh, easy for me to identify. Now you can do all of the configuration that you'll be prompted for through the command line here using various values. I'm only going to define the type and the bit length and then it'll prompt me for the other bits of information here. So I'm going to name it uh, BMX underscore RSA. And I'm going to do no passphrase here. And again, since I'm using a Slack script, I, I can't parse and then autofill in a password value. So I need to make sure that there is no passphrase important to the process here. So now that that's done, I can see my VMX underscore RSA. That's my private key. And then you can see the dot pub for the public key. Now I need to copy these the public key onto my MacBook. So if I were to just do an SSH to, let's say, my MacBook here, which is 192, 40.1, and this is an IP address that is, exists on the FXP interface right now. So I have connectivity from the FXP interface on the VMX to my MacBook, which is like a VM net over here. I think we'll see it down here. There we go, right here. It's a VM net 9. If I try to do this SSH here, it's going to prompt me for a password. Or, oh, it's going to say no route to host. Well, actually, of course it is, because <laughs> I'm using a routing instance. So I don't have a route in my default routing table. So I need to add this toggle. If I do a U, and then I can do the actual name of the routing instance. And I, this is for the FXP. Obviously, this would work with any routing instance you're using. Um, don't give it the table name, which would be like dot .inet0 you know, zero here. Uh, just do the name of the routing instance itself. In this case, it's the custom management interface. So I do that, and then I do exactly the same command. Well, at 40.1, and there we go. And I get prompted for a password. So what I need to do is I need to copy that public key. So we're going to do that now. We can use SCP, and we'll use the same. Uh, 
mounting instance uh, toggle here. SSH score VMX dot pub to C Doyle at 192.168.40.1 users slash C Doyle slash dot SSH slash for password. Might have fat fingered that. <laughs> Oh man, come on. <laughs> it's always the case, right? When you have to pay attention like that. Oh, you're killing me. Finally, the last horse crosses the finish line. We've all been there, right? <laughs> Second you need, if somebody's paying attention, you can't type it in right. So that's now copied. If I go over here and I do an LS, I'll see it. now. There's another important component to this. We need to create a file called authorized keys. Typically this file would contain all of the you know, key pair, public key, you know, set keys that you have that are going to allow access to your system. In this case, uh, for that particular user that we're in the home directory, but in this case, uh, that file doesn't exist. So the file can just seed with that first public key. I can do that from either side here. I can either, you know, do a copy command over here and copy that to authorized underscore keys, or, uh, and what I'm going to do, is I can run exactly the same command over here again, and I can just authorize underscore keys. Now there is a key copy component to most distributions of SSH uh, that does not exist here, uh, but this will work fine as well. Let's see, I'll create this again. First try, all right. So do an LS. And we'll see authorized keys here. Those files are the same, and that's fine, and that's normal, unexpected. Okay, so now that key is there. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, let's see if we can SSH to the box uh, without a uh, without a password. Now we can't. It's just not natural. You can't just do it. Now we could do some config stuff to actually pin that key. But what I'm going to do is just use the dash i config and do utility slash dot ssh and uh, point it at my private key. Sh vmx rsa uh, cdoyle at one And look at that, right in. So that's the first half. And if all you're here for is to get a better understanding of how these key pairs work, we're done. Now, if you want to see how we do the backup, hang on. So. Back to the VMX here. I'm going to do a CD slash, get to the root, and I'm going to navigate to where our scripts live. Now I'm using Slack scripts. Depending on the platform, you can actually do native Python scripts, but it's kind of our higher end data center stuff. And then you have to be running a particular type of Junos that permits non signed Python coding. Uh, Slacks for this purpose uh, works fine. Uh, and it's not a very complicated script. Essentially, all it's going to do is execute a command that pipes something into the shell and runs it. So let's get to that location here. It's cd var slash db slash scripts. And if we're in here, we can see the different types of scripts. And this is going to be an operational script. And if you look in here, I already have backup.slack. Now I'm just going to show you what this looks like while my cat howls at me in the background. Suck it up, Pepper. Uh, if we look at this, that's all there is to it. Now you can pause, you can copy this down, you can ask me for this file, I'd be happy to share it with you. Uh, essentially what we're doing here is we're running an SCP command that copies the configuration file which is located in slash config and then the file itself is juniper.conf.gz and pushing it to a specific location on my laptop. So you would, you know, you can pretty much see what variables you need to change in this part of the configuration to suit your own purposes. All right, so that script is there. Let's see if it works. You have to take my word for it. I don't have this file on my desktop already, but I should be able to just, you know, copy this, paste it here, and hit enter. It's, hey, look at that! And it copied it. And sure enough, drag it over here. This just ended up on my desktop. This file. So I'm going to delete it. And now we get to the automation piece. How do I automate this to run at a specific time? So to do that, I'm going to have to actually configure the script to first be 
be you know one of the scripts that the operating system will use and then I need to set up some event options so let's get in the CLI we'll do configure we'll go to syst edit system and then scripts if I do a show here so our path here is system scripts and then we have the option of setting an op script I've already done this um, and I have a file name that's in that op folder of backup.slacks this doesn't do anything with the script this just means that it is now available to the system the next place we need to go is under event options so we'll do edit event options and if I do a show here I've deactivated the configuration elements that I've used to automate the execution of that script and we can see that I first create a what we call a generate event I think you do up to 10 of these on uh, Juniper box it allows us to create an event manually that will be triggered at a time interval that we specify. So here the name of the event is 30m-backup. It has an interval of 60 seconds. I originally had this set to 30 minutes and then I didn't want to wait 1800 seconds to make sure it was working so I shortened it up. 60 is the minimum value. Uh, and then we have the policy itself which essentially says look at this event, follow this interval, and when this interval is reached execute a command. And in this case I said execute the command op backup which is the same as me doing this and if I'll just do uh, exit into operational mode and go op backup that's how you run a slack script tell it what kind of script give it the name if I hit enter here I'll get back to a prompt and back on my desktop I now see this and that's all there is to it as always if you have any questions or comments please leave them below if you're interested more in the slack script that I wrote reach out to me I'd be happy to share it with you and as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.